My name's Matthew Brown and I opened Brown School of Art in September 2013 as an independent, serious school for aspiring artists. My grandmother, when she uh, um, had gone to England in 19, about 1929, um, and my father was born in 1930, around 1931 she decided that she would go to art school uh, at the Slade in London, which is one of the big art schools. Prior to that, she had been at Canterbury in the South Island, where she'd met my grand grandfather. And she lived down in the Franz Joseph Glacier Hotel, I think, which has since, I think, burnt down. And she lived there and painted, and painted a lot of landscapes for tourists, a lot of uh, mountains, uh, the glacier, uh, and they were very popular. And so then she started to make some into posters. And then she continued painting all through the 50s, where her work started to kind of change a bit from oil painting landscapes and portraits that started to become more abstract. And then she moved into acrylics and started to do some pouring of paint, which was quite pioneering for its time. I think of myself as a British painter. I do think of myself as a British painter. And in fact, when I had my recent show at Oryx Art, um, Rex told me that somebody came in and said, you can see this, this painter is British. You can see it in the work, you can see it in the color palette, you can see it in the sensibility. It would be, it would be, it would be. We know that. Yeah. The first painting I sold was to my grandmother. She was, you know, a great supporter and very encouraging. I don't know that she liked my paintings so much when they started to get more and more abstract and minimal. Yes. I've, I've, I've called the latest body of work called Numina. An easy example to explain would be that you might feel heat from a toaster coming through the top. But that's the that's phenomena. The electricity is noumena, the thing that you can't have, you can't see it, you can't grasp it. So with the students, I think that they come to the school in the first instance to try and get a sense of their own practice as it grows, what potential might they have. But it needs to be a little bit more punctuated by the kind of practice that you're using all the way through it. So I think, you know, some parts, some parts need yeah. to have a, be a bit more specific. Like a I'm concerned that it should be a really well-regarded and really well-respected school and that it's not um, casually seen as a kind of entertainment venue uh, in, in the way that possibly some other places might be where they're more to do with hobbies. It's more, much more than a hobby, and I treat the students as serious practitioners, and I think they make work that responds to that. Giving it a push to use in part of here so that it changes its pace from here to here. Just so that it doesn't end up Based looking like... the same like... colour, but maybe just subtly changing. Oh, I think it's a superb tip. Uh, that's evidenced by the fact that most of us have been with them for years, actually, and have just kept coming back for a little bit more, uh, you know, a little bit more of a fix. Teaching um, rewards me, and I've, it rewards me because I know that I'm helping people to enable their lives to have a greater degree of richness. So. They come, people come looking for something. Maybe they don't know that painting is going to be the answer, but sometimes it is. And on those occasions, I see people grow and I see them blossom as people and practitioners.